Hey everyone, welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Lee, and I narrate near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. My videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and to show that there is indeed life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting those like, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To my return viewers, welcome back. You know the drill. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and enjoy today's narration. Today's experience was emailed to me by Richard Thompson. He states that after a car accident in 1991, he spends time in hell, and when he calls out to God, he is forgiven and brought before the throne. It is here that God shows him his life, and then gives him a hint of when rapture will happen. Hi Lee, you are probably going to think that I am crazy for reaching out to you about this. After listening to Julie's story, I felt that I needed to tell mine. First, Julie is incorrect with her vision. The world does not make it to the 2070s. I am unsure of who showed her the future that she saw, but it is false. You will see that it is false in the next few years, when her visions don't come true. I suppose that I am reaching out to attempt to save you and the rest of those listening to the pain and grief that is going to come when the rapture takes place. My name is Richard T, and you have my absolute permission to share my name and this experience with your listeners. I was born in 1947 to extremely religious parents, think Harold Camping religious but magnified by 10. It seemed like every other week we were headed for the bomb shelter because mom and dad were sure that this time we were doomed. I cannot begin to tell you how many times this happened throughout my life. When I was three, the Korean War broke out, and of course, my parents ever the worry warts immediately began prepping the bunker for the Koreans to drop their atomic bombs on us. Yes, they heard a few buzzwords and immediately thought that all countries had atomic bombs, not realizing that only the USA and Soviets had them at that time. By the time the Korean War ended, we were heading to the bunker at least three times a month. This happened when the Vietnam War started in 1955 as well. It would be another 10 years before the US would join the war. In 1957, the Soviets put Sputnik into space. My parents being the well-intentioned ignorant people that they were, just knew that the Soviets were up there, looking down on them in nowhere USA, just plotting to drop an atomic bomb on us. So off we went to the bomb shelter yet again. In 1965, America joined the Vietnam War, and two months after I graduated high school, because I had no chance to go to college, I was drafted. I'm not going to bore you with the specifics of the training that I received in the Marine Corps, nor will I tell you that I wasn't scared out of my mind. All I knew is that I was 18 and going to war. As my drill instructor loved to tell us, put your faith in God, your behind belongs to me. Eight weeks of absolute hell to get ready to be dropped into a country that was halfway around the world. I made it out of Vietnam relatively unharmed, except for a case of jungle rot. Nothing much happened. I was one of the lucky ones that made it through three tours of that awful place. In 1969, I fulfilled my duty and left the Marine Corps. You may be wondering why I am telling you about Vietnam. Well, Vietnam caused me to lose my faith in both mankind and God. After seeing the horrors that I saw, I just couldn't force myself to believe in God any longer. My parents were still the same no-nonsense Christians, and they couldn't understand why I was the way I was. The issue of my lack of faith caused a huge strain between myself and my parents, one that would last for the next 22 years. In 1991, I was headed home from a meeting with a business partner at 9.30 in the evening when I fell asleep at the wheel and crashed headfirst into a tree. I wasn't wearing a seatbelt, so when I hit the tree, my body slammed into the windshield, which caused me to crack my skull. Since it was so late at night, and the area that I was in wasn't known for having a lot of traffic, I lay there bleeding. I could feel as my body began to shut down, me thinking to myself, oh, so this is what it's like to die. I felt my breathing slow, and then nothing. I was in a complete state of nothingness. I could hear something scratching and clawing in the darkness, but could not see what it was. As my eyes started to adjust to the darkness, I began to see what was making the sounds in the dark. 
There are no words to describe these things, their skin rotting off, bones showing. Teeth that were so sharp that it looked like they could pick a body clean in a matter of seconds. It was then that whatever these things were noticed me and started to chase me. All I could hear was the soggy sound of death coming for me. Help me God, please help me. I whispered as I continued to run away. Slowly gaining the courage to say it louder and louder before finally screaming, God, save me, I need you. The force of the wind that I felt was like taking a bullet train. I felt something grab my hand and pull me at the speed of light and away from the gnawing, gnashing sound of death. I felt love and comfort in whatever had grabbed my hand. Though we were still in darkness, I could barely make out an outline of this thing. We finally made it to the light and I was able to see what had grabbed me. An angel about ten feet in height had grabbed me and pulled me into the light. Who are you? I asked. I am Piraccio, a booming voice said within my head. I remembered that my parents had spoken of Piraccio multiple times while growing up. Apparently, this angel was the head archangel in control of all guardian angels. Where was I before you saved me? And where am I now? I asked. Barachil's booming voice stated that I had been in hell, but when I called out to God for help, the Most High sent him to bring me to heaven. I looked intently at Barachil and noticed that he was staring to his left. Finally, he said the Most High wishes to see you. He has something he wants to show you. As he finished saying this, he took my hand again, and off we went. In what seemed like a non of second, I was at the opening of a huge throne room. The doors opened, and I was told to enter. The first thing that I noticed when I entered the throne room was the singing. It was a melody that I had never heard, but the beauty of it touched the deepest parts of my soul. The second thing that I noticed was the columns. They had a Roman architectural feel to them. Lastly, as I made my way closer and closer to the throne, I noticed the brightest light that I had ever seen. A light so bright that eventually, I could no longer step forward as my soul could not handle the light. Avert your eyes, Richard. For you are unclean, and your soul cannot handle my brilliance, his voice said. I did as he told me to, and turned away from him. Why did you save me, Lord? Because you called out to me. But I stopped believing in you, many years ago, and you still saved me. I saved you because you called out to me. Just because you say that you stopped believing in me does not mean that you truly did. So what now? I assume that since I am seeing you, Lord, it must mean that I am either crazy, or I am dead, and since I know I'm not crazy, it has to be that I am dead. You are correct. As soon as I heard that, my life immediately began playing before my eyes. I saw every deed that I had done, and all of it played out before me. I saw myself being born, growing up in what I thought was a crazy family, and constantly going to the bunker. What I had forgotten was how much fun my dad had made it. I remember seeing myself relive Vietnam all of the hurt that I caused by killing those that were trying to kill me. I relived the hurt of losing my friends over those three tours. I relived the last words that I said to my parents about not believing in a God that allows such evil to occur. I saw my dad's heartbreak as I slammed the door leading to me leaving and never returning. I saw as my mom and dad waited up day after day, week after week, and month after month hoping that I would come home before finally giving up. I saw the stress that my mom went through when she tried to take care of my dad after his heart attack, which led to her stroke. That's enough, I muttered. I don't need to see how bad of a son I have been to know I am a horrible person. Perhaps I deserved hell. God chuckled, and I heard his voice say, no, look again. I looked again as my life flashed by, and I saw how proud my parents were, and how they kept me in their prayers, even after I quit believing. They prayed that one day I would come to my senses. It's too late now. I'm dead. There's not much that I can do to change that. I heard a booming voice state you're wrong. Who is it that created the heavens and the earth? Who is it that created the birds of the air and the beasts of the ground? Who is it that created man? I answered. You did, Lord. There was then another question. Do you wish to return or do you wish to stay? Taken aback by this question, I had another one of my own. If I return, will I be raptured when it comes? That depends on how you act between now and that time. What do you mean? Does that mean that rapture will happen during my lifetime? Yes, the voice said. Will you tell me when? It's not like anyone is going to believe me anyway. 
God replied, you will have those that believe your words, but also those that do not. You will be as old as your father is now, and 20 years after, the rapture will occur. You will return now, tell everyone or tell no one. That is your choice. I awoke to the sound of sirens. I was laying on my back and had a paramedic standing over me, doing CPR. He's awake. Get move on. We have to get this guy to the hospital now, the EMT screamed. Don't worry, Mr. Thompson. Everything will be fine. You gave us quite the scare. Luckily for you, someone saw you go off the road, she said. After a long recovery period in the hospital, I was finally released to head home. I had no idea what was going on and my head was foggy. The words, you will be your father's age in 20 years, kept popping into my head. What could this mean? What in the world happened to me? It had been explained that I was in a car wreck and the person driving behind me saw me go off-road and hit the tree. They had to haul their tail four miles up the road to call for an ambulance. The doctors told me that I was a real living miracle. The gash in my head caused me to lose almost 70% of the blood in my body. To hear them tell it, there's no way you should have survived that. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, I was finally able to figure out the riddle that kept repeating in my head. Your father's age and 20 years. As soon as I figured out that riddle, everything came flooding back. The accident, my time spent in hell, being saved by the angel, being given the prophetic vision of when rapture was going to happen. I have talked about this multiple times in online groups and other places such as the NDE Usenet, but usually people end up laughing it off. I am hoping that you and your listeners don't just laugh it off. My dad was 71 when I died in 1991. In 2018, I turned my father's age, the ripe young age of 71. Adding 20 years to that, the rapture will happen in 2038. I will be 91 years old when the rapture occurs. I beg everyone, please heed these words. It is not too late to change and accept Christ. Once the rapture happens, tribulation will begin. You have been warned. That does it for Richard's story. Truthfully, I am not sure what to make of this experience. I have heard a lot of predictions based on the rapture occurring, but have never seen someone say that they got a riddle from God. The last time I paid attention to it was when I heard Harold Camping say it was going to happen in 2012 because he cracked the code in the Bible. So when it didn't happen, I sort of wrote it off until I got this email. Do you guys believe what Richard is saying? Do you believe that he was shown the rapture? Do you think that it was a trick by Satan? Let me know what you think in the comment section below.